Uh, hey guys, Rob from the Off Grid Tiny House. Date, times, temperatures. Pretty nice day out today. Um, today is clean up the rest of the tiny house day. Hopefully. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, and go from there. Uh, one thing I wanted to uh, mention was uh, <laughs> on the way here, while driving, I saw some vandalism, uh, BLM spray painted on some U-Haul rental trucks. Um, you know, those trucks you rent when you're moving or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, and then I saw the cop over there doing his little report, taking photos, writing stuff down. So, it must have been pretty wild last night in town. Um, luckily, the tiny house looks like crap from the outside, so people just don't <laughs> mess with it. So, that's kind of how we do the urban blending in. Stealth, stealth living in urban environment. Make the outside look crap and nobody will bother you. So, um, <clears throat> some things, some things to talk to you about. So, wind turbine, I haven't figured out how I'm able to make that work yet into to power up the lithiums. So, I do not know how that's going to work. Other than that, uh, like I said, just doing a little cleanup nonsense going on. <clears throat> I cleared off the back table back here, which I'll grab you and show. Um, because, guys, um, right here is going to be my new product going in that I ordered. Extremely expensive, extremely good ratings. But it's made for the off-grid lifestyle, guys, and that's kind of important. So, basically, I pulled the trigger on buying a 12-volt fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, and ice maker all in one. It's a 12-volt appliance, so it'll run strictly off my off-grid solar, which means huge advantage there. Um... You know, in case the grid goes down, I'll still be up and running with all my supplies. And just to mention this real quick, if you're a prepper and have been hunting down deep freezers, and I know a lot of my buddies online have been, and a lot of them had to pay way over regular prices because of the pandemic. A lot of people were gouging, or are still gouging, and a lot of the uh, appliances, like deep freezes, are very hard to find. Um, so I probably have been gouged a little bit on the price. I'm not even going to mention the price, but you guys will be able to look it up when it arrives. The specs and everything and the name brand. But it's the name brand of the company is Dometic. I talked to one of my patrons, Graham, um, asked him how his setup works and he has a Dometic as well and he's pretty happy with it and it's pretty essential if you want cold drinks, ice um, I'm a big fan of ice because I drink a lot of ice water and uh, I really don't, I just you know, I hopefully it's a decent enough size that it'll do me but either way, it's super efficient, guys. Runs on 12 volts um, at 1 amp, it says. And uh, it, pro it probably runs for um, <clears throat> I don't know. The, they said that you can easily run it off of a 100 amp hour battery. So I have double that. So we'll see and put that to the test. Unfortunately, my system wasn't big enough to handle 120 volt appliances, but that's the way it is with off-grid living. I don't mind spending the extra money on something that's going to work 
um, and work even in crappy conditions outside, right? So that's the main thing. Um, so that is happening, and uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be exciting stuff. Alright guys, so I pulled the copper line out of that stove, this uh, propane RV stove here, and I think this is a good height, we can put this, put anything in the stove, and I got the cooktop. So originally the copper gas line was going through here to here. I'm going to attach a new piece, go all the way around and out this hole here. And so what I did was I left a little cavity here so I can run the gas line down and maybe store a 20 pounder under here or run a line, drill a hole on the outside of the trailer, run the line all the way down and do that, which may be the answer. But I have room for a 20 pounder storage under here. So I kind of go in with that theme. Um, and then once this is once the gas and everything's run, I can build this in and hide it a little bit, this corner, because it's kind of like, whoa, nasty. <laughs> totally nasty, dog. Yeah, so we'll build it in somehow, maybe with this. It looks half decent there. And then once I build up this part of it, this part that's sticking out, um, do something like that stain it paint it whatever um do something so for now um i gotta leave the cover off because i gotta run a i can actually probably just feed that same line back through and be golden so let's try and do that um see if i can set the cam up for you guys here we go Let's see what I can do here. What kind of magic can we pull off? <laughs> nope. <laughs> the hole's not big enough. But I can always cut that out bigger if I have to. To get the uh, nut inside of it. And back here's too tight. A little too tight for my liking. Um, maybe. It'd have to be on an angle if I do do it. Let's see. Try something here. In the damn winter, vine wire is definitely in the way.
I think I'm just going to cut a new hole. It's going to look a lot better than what I'm trying to do here. So I'll cut the hole a little bit bigger so we can get the nut through. And that part will be covered up anyway, so makes a little bit more sense to do it that way. All right, I'll be back.